shout out to the Millers, uh, Michael and Grant Miller, uh, who have given us this opportunity to be here to, to bring a guest that we had on the show before, Dr. Peter Page, our county medical officer. But uh, before we go and, and get into the subject of this interview, I wanted to also shout out to Tommy, our producer, and the entire Miami Community Newspapers team for doing an incredible job in getting these information, the educational pieces out to the community. You guys, which is so important. So without further ado, Dr. Peter Page, you are our new county um, chief medical officer, uh, also a physician at the um, Jackson Health System. But um, I wanted to ask you real quick, if you can give us a brief status uh, briefing on the uh, situation of COVID in the Miami-Dade County. Uh, certainly, and thanks for having me. Good afternoon. And, uh, you know, I'll start actually with a little bit of positive news. We've actually seen somewhat of a flattening um, of the pandemic numbers in Miami-Dade County uh, and in the Jackson Health System, as well as other health systems across South Florida. What we're seeing is the positivity rate has dropped a little over 2% over the past two weeks in the county. Still high, you know, up over 9%, but definitely trending in a positive direction. And we're seeing the number of cases of inpatient hospitalized COVID patients uh, actually pretty flat over the past two weeks, which again is a positive. We're seeing similar trends at Jackson. And remember, this has been a critical time for us. You know, we're approaching that three week time frame from New Year's um, on the heels of Christmas and Hanukkah. And so, you know, we're cautiously optimistic that, you know, we're, we're handling this anticipated surge reasonably well. Uh, we're not letting down our guard. You know, we're watching really closely over the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, and we have to be, remain very vigilant as it relates sure. to our. So, doctor, excuse me, but is there any reason why, I guess, any, any, any indicators as to why we're having a flattening right now in Miami-Dade County as far as the infection rate? You know, I think there's I think there's a lot of collaboration going on right now across the county. Uh, you know, I think the county mayor, Levine Cava, has done a great job of trying to bring people together and, and try to unite around uh, our efforts to combat this, this virus and this pandemic. I think there are a lot of people, you know, paying attention to what they should be paying attention to. Um, and I'm I'm hopeful that over the holidays there were, you know, fewer people having big gatherings and celebrations and that people were trying to limit a lot of their celebrations to people who live in their household. So, you know, we hope that's the, the continuing trend. Um, but, you know, we have to, as I mentioned, remain vigilant. All right. And, and, and we've heard the mayor, who I'm very appreciative because she connected me with you. And, and thank you so much for, for being out here. But also, we've heard her speak recently on the news, uh, claim that, that there's not enough vaccinations being sent down to Miami-Dade County. Can you give us a little brief on that so that our audience is, is, has a good understanding of what's going on? Uh, certainly. So, you know, obviously it's a su supply-demand issue. Um, we've been very happy with the response from the communities. A lot of people want to get vaccinated. That's a really positive sign because remember that the, the key is not just the supply but it's also people being willing to, to take the vaccination. I think that we've seen very positive trends in those who have gotten vaccinated as it relates to the side effect profile. And I think that we're seeing more and more people um, want to get vaccinated when they see others, especially colleagues, friends, coworkers, family members, get vaccinated and do well. Uh, what we're seeing is that we're administering a lot of vaccinations across Miami-Dade County. Uh, when the uh, vaccines come in, we're getting them into people's arms. Um, but there's just not the supply that we need. Uh, the demand is far outweighed the supply at this point. Uh, the mayor and her team at the county level, working with city mayors and a lot of people across the county and the health systems are really trying to open up more spots, more places where people can get vaccinated. Um, you know, and, but we need vaccines to be able to operate those and get, get the vaccinations into the people that are, are looking to get them and need them. You know, here at Jackson, you know, obviously greater than 65 year olds is a big target for us. We, we've done over 30,000 uh, initial vaccinations um, of the greater than 65 year old population in our community already just across the Jackson health system and the other health systems are, you know, coming right along with us to try to get as many people their initial vaccination obviously they need their second one you know at the appropriate time frame from the first but there's a lot a lot of momentum around this any word on on when the cavalry will arrive with vaccines you know i think that 
you know, Pfizer and Moderna have produced a lot. It's very difficult to tell where they're being held up, if there's enough of them at this point to get enough out to the states. You know, Florida now is over a, a million doses have been administered across the state, over 12 million across the, across the United States. So there's a lot going out there. It's just that the demand, as I mentioned, is it far out exceeds the supply. Um, we're hopeful too that it's not just going to be Pfizer and Moderna. You know, we have Johnson and Johnson and AstraZeneca that are you know working aggressively to get their vaccines ready as well. Uh, I think we're going to need those two um, vaccines on board as well to really start getting up the number of vaccines that we can really make a substantial change in this effort. There's been a lot of talk about the uh, the variant the B117 and possibly a couple others that are being detected around the country that are, that are migrating across the country into, into uh, South Florida. Any word on that? What, what can you tell our viewers about that? Yeah, I mean, these viruses mutate. You know, it's very well known. It's very frequent. Um, and it's, it's common not just with this virus, but with a lot of viruses. So far, the preliminary feedback we've gotten on the vaccines is that they will be effective against these mutant strains that we're seeing right now. We just don't know what's down the road, you know, and, and it could be that we develop, we see a mutation develop that is less, you know, susceptible to the vaccine. We just don't know. Right now it's positive, um, but we have to continue to aggressively monitor the changes. And and uh, offline we were speaking about what you've seen so far as far as uh, uh, adverse reactions to the, to the vaccine. Um, what are you seeing in, in Miami-Dade County? You know, we've seen a couple cases where there was kind of uh, an allergic reaction versus an anaphylactic reaction. People did well, you know, in the Jackson Health System that had those side effects. Um, the majority of people that we're seeing that get side effects are getting soreness or redness around the site of the injection, uh, my muscle aches, joint aches. Uh, some are getting low-grade fevers and lightheaded. Um, and, uh, you know, a, Fatigue has also been a, a relatively common complaint, but you know, it tends to resolve in 24 to 36 hours and people tend to do well. And the conditions in the hospitals, you mentioned earlier, you're seeing somewhat of a reduction of, of patients, but um, what's the capacity of the hospitals? How are they doing? And, and any word on that? You know, we have a South Florida CMO council that meets on a regular basis. Um, so we work together. We try to keep each other updated on where we're at. You know, everybody's in a pretty similar position right now. You know, we're busy, um, but our inpatient positive numbers are significantly down from where they were over the summer during our peak. Uh, you know, so the, the number of COVID inpatient patients is kind of stabilized, maybe slightly increased, but nothing like it was over the summer. So the hospitals are doing well, but they're also managing a lot of other people. And remember, I mean, this is still a bad virus, still causes a very severe illness in a lot of different people, especially those that are most vulnerable. So it's still very challenging on our staff. Um, people are still working really hard. It's just the numbers, you know, haven't jumped like they did over the over the summer, which is great. That's great news. That's at least one positive piece. So today I, I, I read in the um, Miami Herald that that again, supporting what you just said, that the uh, infection race is down. I've also read that, that the, uh, at least in Miami-Dade County, that we had a, one of the highest reported periods over the last weekend for the state. So that's good news that the state is going, well, not good news that the state going up, but the good news is that Dade County is certainly being reduction in rate. The rates are being reduced, infectious rates that are. But um, I wanted to get your thoughts on masking and, and, and the overall, uh, you know, consensus among the public, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, uh, are people more receptive to putting on masks and donning on ma donning masks appropriately, doffing them, uh, sanitizing their hands, distancing, uh, the guidelines. Yeah. You know, I, I think that the community has, has risen up to a great extent to the challenge. I think a lot of people are masking. I think a lot of people are paying attention, social distancing, trying to stay out of crowds and gatherings, using hand hygiene as often and frequently as they can, trying to keep surfaces sanitized. Uh, you know, so I think there's a lot of positivity around that. I think we always have a challenge, especially when we're a major tourist area. A lot of people come in from out of town. Um, and sometimes people do let down their guard, especially at, since we've been you know, battling this pandemic for so long. 
uh, I think that there is a certain amount of fatigue that sets in. I, I, I really think that the message has to continue to be that, you know, we have to have to have to continue to follow these safety measures in the communities. Uh, you know, we can't let our guard down around masking and hand hygiene and social distancing, and avoiding crowds and celebrations. Um, there's a lot that's still unknown. You know, you talked about the mutant strains. Uh, we talked about the vaccines. They're relatively new. We're not really sure yet how long immunity will last with these vaccines. Um, we also know that they, even at 95% effective, there's 5% that aren't, it's not effective for. Uh, and there are other viruses. You know, we've seen a decrease in the presentation of influenza at the hospitals, largely probably related to the safety efforts we're utilizing for uh, the COVID pandemic. So there's a lot of really, really good reasons why we need to continue to follow these standards um, as we continue to go forward in, the, in our fight against this pandemic. Absolutely. And then what about diet? Any, any, any research, any, any, any uh, evidence-based um, um, guidelines or, or, or guidance, right? Better yet, guidance on diet, vitamins, intake of vitamin D3 and, and C. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, there are, some, there are some schools of thought that vitamin C, vitamin D augmentation can help. There are some schools of thought that zinc uh, can also help. Uh, you know, I haven't seen anything, you know, you know, so convincing that I would go around and tell people, oh, yeah, this is going to work. I think that they may help. They may help support your, your body system to fight it. Um, but I still, still think you have to stick to the basic measures we just discussed and obviously get vaccinated as soon as you have an opportunity. Thank you, sir. Um, last words in our last couple of minutes here uh, to audience, uh, precautionary words, uh, words of of, of um, hope, if you will. Um, what, what would you tell our audience now? You know, there's a lot of positivity, you know, and I think we have to capitalize on the positivity that exists. You know, the vaccines are coming out. Uh, you know, we knew there wouldn't be enough vaccines this early, you know, to be able to vaccinate everyone who wanted it this early. You know, and I, I think that we committed to, you know, the the healthcare providers, we've committed to the long-term care, nursing home facility um, staff, and obviously patients. Uh, we committed to first responders. We've committed to greater than 65-year-olds. So, you know, we're really trying to target our, our most susceptible and highest risk and most vulnerable populations. Uh, there's a lot more people to be vaccinated. Uh, and we have to continue to work very aggressively logistically to get as many vaccines into the arms of our community's uh, members as we can. You know, Serving I as say, the medical officer. I will say this, you know, the challenge to a lot of these places that are operating the vaccination centers is, is, is significant. You know, there's a lot of logistical challenges. People are just doing an amazing job. Uh, to get the vaccines out as quickly as possible. So I just want to recognize all the efforts that all the different fronts of people who are participating in the vaccination process. Absolutely. The frontline heroes, definitely, as you are. Um, so so one last question. I don't know if you answered because we had a little bit of interference uh, on the teachers front, at schools and, and vaccinating teachers and the children. Yeah, they're definitely part of our priority group. You know, we're just trying to roll them roll out categories as we can based on vaccine availability you know we also have a lot of essential workers that we want to try to accommodate we have other vulnerable patients that are less than 65 and so it's all trying to phase in uh, different groups at different times based on the availability of the vaccines but everybody has them on our radar screen and on our prioritization uh, portfolio uh, we just have to figure out how and when Great. And, and I, I assume the testing still continues and the, and the contact tracing still continues. Am I correct? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. And then lastly, if people want to know a little more about what your efforts are or what's going on, where can they go? What website should they uh, log into? You know, we have a county website. It's um, miamidade.gov backslash vaccine. It has a lot of information. The other thing that we've done through the county and the mayor's office is that we've incorporated access to other sites such as the uh, Jackson, Jackson Health System site uh, and a couple of the other healthcare systems across the county. You can access those sites by going through that portal as well. Uh, ours is jacksonhealth.org. Um, 
but there's a lot of different sites that you get access to get information around, you know, specifically to your area, but also in general, how, how we're doing as a county and as a state. Doctor, I can't thank you so much for being here. Um, I, I, or I can't thank you enough for being here and taking time out of your busy schedule to inform our community of the information. Um, with having said that, I wish you a great day and an awesome week and, and keep up the great work. We're depending on you, sir. Well, thank you. Thanks for the kind comments. And I always look forward to catching up with you.